Hello, I am Dr. Lawrence Kotlow. The following tutorial was developed to assist my patients as well as other parents who have had their infants tethered oral tissues revised. As with any type of surgical treatment, a certain amount of aftercare is required to allow the surgical procedure to be successful. Successful outcomes after the release of tethered oral tissues increases when careful post-surgery exercises are properly completed in order to see that both sides of the surgical release areas are kept apart and not allowed to heal back together. The decision to revise or release an infant's tethered oral tissue, such as the upper lip, tongue tie, and occasionally the cheek or buckle ties, should be based on a combination of factors. Initially, the symptoms described by the mother and observed by the infant are the reason parents seek care. Identifying and treating interfering tethered oral tissues requires a team effort. Ideally, the breastfeeding team begins with a physician who understands how tethered oral tissues relate to breastfeeding difficulties and how these tissues can prevent a proper latch during breastfeeding. After evaluating the symptoms and completing the exam, the physician should refer a mother to a knowledgeable IBCLC or lactation consultant. The IBCLC is a person trained to understand and evaluate breastfeeding difficulties as well as for any abnormal oral tissues. She should then be able to refer the infant to a dentist or physician who is also educated in breastfeeding mechanisms, as well as understanding the relationship of tethered tissues in achieving a comfortable and successful latch onto a mother's breast. Although there are many methods of revising these tissues, laser surgery is optimal. These revisions can be completed in a few minutes in the dental office without the need for general anesthesia in the hospital. The so-called scissor snip of the tongue and lip usually results in an incomplete release of the tongue and often no treatment of the upper lip. Thus, there is little or no resolution of symptoms. In most infants, a simple laser release of the mucosal tissue is adequate to allow the infant to achieve a comfortable as well as successful latch. Deep releases into the muscle of either the tongue or lip are not usually required. After a surgical release, I recommend returning to your lactation consultant or IBCLC, and in some instances, she or I will refer you to a chiropractor or cranial sacral therapist trained in treating infants for additional care in improving the breastfeeding experience. The first aftercare activity I recommend completing is a gentle cheek and lip massage with infants having their head placed in your lap facing forward. The massage exercise can be completed as often as you want and for any specific length of time that you feel is necessary. The first purpose of this care is to help your infant relax and not develop an aversion to you placing your fingers into his or her mouth. Begin or start by a gentle cheek massage, followed by placing your index finger slowly into the baby's mouth, touching and gently rubbing all of the different areas of the mouth. Oral aversion develops in infants when surgery is too deep or if the post-surgical care is completed too often. It's not meant to be very aggressive. There is no need to wake your infant up during the night to do these exercises, nor is it needed to be done more than three times a day. The second purpose is to help your infant learn how to develop an effective sucking pattern. This is accomplished by placing the baby on your lap and have them suck on your index finger with the fingernail touching the top side of the tongue and extending into the roof of the mouth, ending just in front of the junction of what we call the hard and soft palate. Have your infant suckle between your fingers first and second knuckle. The more the tongue moves, the less chance it will fuse back together. And finally, if your child appears uncomfortable after surgery, you can get some analgesia or pain release by having the baby suck on your finger the same way with a little bit of breast milk or make a small solution of sugar water and place this on your finger during the suck training. When we cut ourselves, our body tries to heal the area and recreate the prior condition of the tissue by primary wound healing. After care for the upper lip tie and tongue requires that we intervene and prevent this from occurring. Therefore, it is necessary to keep the two sides of the surgical side apart. We do this by elevating the upper lip towards the nose with adequate force to completely observe the gum area as well as the area under the lip called the vestibule where the releases occurred. 
The healing process will also create a white to yellow coloration covering the surgical site. This is normal. It is not a sign of any infection developing. In more than 15,000 completed surgeries, I have never encountered a situation where an infection developed. The primary post-surgical complication of the lip and tongue tie release is the failure to keep the surgical site from forming a new attachment, or in some cases, some post-surgery discomfort. The aftercare for revision of the lip tie involves elevating the lip upward until it touches the infant's nose. This process should be continued three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening for three seconds. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And in most instances, repeated daily for two weeks. Failure to completely elevate the lip will result in an incomplete or partial release and a new attachment refusing similar to the original position. Also, if you just pull up on the lateral borders rather than the middle of the uh, upper lip, the lip middle will just heal right back together. After completion of elevating the lip, then we should move to the tongue tie area. The correct post-surgery care required to prevent the release of the tongue tie attachment from fusing and reforming is similar to the lip. After care management of the tongue requires the tongue to be kept separated from the floor of the mouth and preventing primary healing of the surgical areas. This is the more difficult of the two stretching aftercare exercises and must be properly completed to prevent from having to reopen or relasering the area between the tongue and the floor of the mouth. This is accomplished by elevating the tongue from the floor of the mouth, and this is done by pulling it upward or pushing downward where the tongue and the floor of the mouth are pulled apart. It is not meant to push the tongue down the infant's throat. It should be done with enough force to see the diamond-shaped incision area. These exercises should also be completed three times a day for three seconds for two weeks. A white area usually covers the surgical site, which can be very sticky. If it remains covering this area after two weeks, parents should continue stretching for another week to prevent the white sticky cover of the surgical site from adhering to itself and healing back together. After completion of the revisions of the lip and tongue, parents often ask what should it look like. The following slides will show you what the lip should look like prior to surgery and immediately post-op surgery. And the bottom slides show a variety of different tongue tie releases and how they should look after surgery. The following slides show what the surgical sites of the lip and tongue should look like approximately one week after the surgical completion of the treatment. Uh, the phrenectomies are not done just for the infants. They're done for a variety of reasons. Uh, the bottom slide shows a case where the parent was concerned because a tooth had not erupted and one had in the front. So we release the upper lip tie, expose the tooth, and you can see once that exposure was done, and within a week, the tooth came all the way into the mouth. I like to add this for parents so that after you see the procedures that we've done in the post-surgery, that you have an understanding that what we have done is for your child's benefit as well as yours. These are just a small sampling of some of the comments parents have told me that they uh, felt after the surgical procedure. We thank you for being the light at the end of the tunnel. We found Dr. Kotlow and he changed everything. Thank you for believing that ties do affect breastfeeding and the quality of our lives. Dr. Kotler literally changed our life. Life is so much easier now and more enjoyable now that everyone is more comfortable. My only wish is that I had not done it sooner. We cannot thank you enough. And it's just not the parents. It's also the doctors who've attended my lectures and go home and start to do these procedures. The comment from one dentist who attended one of my presentations and after watching a mother breastfeed on a three-year-old infant after his first revision sent me a note saying this is one of the most wonderful experiences of my professional life. For more information on laser surgery and tethered oral tissues, see my website. And for those of you who wish to download the atlas called Breastfeeding Should Be Fun and Enjoyable, it is done at no cost uh, to be used and shared. Those of you who have not either purchased or received my book 
during surgery can order additional copies uh, by going to my website. Each of us has the ability to change the lives of our mothers and infants and make their relationships better and make a true difference in their life. For more information, go to kidsteeth.com or if you have other questions and you wish to contact me, I can be reached at kidsteeth at aol.com.